Out of every creature in Path of Titans, there's one I find quite unique. The Amargasaurus. Being one of the few sauropods and the only official sauropod, they know when to put down their feet. But bravado is not everything in a fight. Let's see what you should do to properly fight as an Amargasaurus. Hello there, my name is Adam Vokte and today I'm going to show you how to properly fight as an Amargasaurus. First thing first, let's get the disclaimers out of the way. First of all, any future updates may change the way you can play as a Marcosaurus, be it ability-wise or stat-wise. So what I'm about to tell you may be temporarily, at least until any major changes. Second of all is, my time with the Amargasaurus are pretty limited, so you more experienced Amarga players might not agree with everything I say. In which case, if you find something disagreeable, just comment it down below in a calm and fashionable and mature way. In this video, we will be going over the arsenal of the Amargasaurus, what subspecies you should choose, what terrain you should choose to fight in, and what type of fights you can find yourself in. And at the end, I'll give a summary. The head abilities for the Amargasaurus is a quick headbutt attack that can be used while running. No alternative, so we will be equipping that. For senses, we have two options. We have Lone Survivor that increases armor and maneuverability when you're not in a group. The other one makes you knockback resistant, and it's quite effective. The front limb is a stomp ability that causes high damage output at the cost of some stamina. You also need to stand still for to be able to activate it. The hide ability only increases your bleed and venom healing by 30%. Nothing too much about that, and no alternatives. No abilities for legs yet, and only one ability for tail. As for what subspecies you should choose, they all have their own pros and cons. For example, the double defense are capable of giving bleed damage when attacking, but unlike its other subspecies, when attacked itself, it cannot give the bleed effect to the attacker. That being said, it's still capable of tanking a few hits, even from a T-Rex. The speed and attack of Margosaurus shares the fact that if either of them are attacked, they will give the bleed effect to any of the attackers. Of course remember, they will not receive any bleed status if they bite your tail. They do look like each other, but the one is slightly faster and the other has a slight bigger damage output. It's difficult to say which one you should choose. They each have their own specialized area. What I mean is that one subspecies are better suited against mid-tiers, while other are better suited against apexes. I'll come back to that later, but as for now, I'd say you should choose either speed or damage. As for what terrain you should choose, again, I feel like that depends on what enemies you're facing. As for the attack range on Amargosaurus, I'd say that the attack range in front of the Amargosaurus kind of requires you to be up close and personal, while the tail does have some range due to it being so long. That being said, if you're going to fight mid-tiers, I would suggest a more open area with elevated areas. I also recommend taking the high ground, that way you can utilize your highest damage dealer at maximum potential. If you do that, you stand a good chance against pseudo apexes even if you're alone. However, if you're up against an apex then I would rather recommend an area with rather thick foliage, or a lot of hindrance that can stop your enemies in their tracks. I kinda glossed over it, but I had to say, from my experience from playing the Amargasaurus, I kinda found it bad in solo play. It is really good when you have a herd, but as a solo, it is kinda just a walking target. Let me just say it like this. If this is how uh, most of you guys see the Amargosaurus, then this is how I see the Amargosaurus. I don't mean to slander the Amargosaurus, but in a 1v1, the Amargosaurus kinda doesn't stand a chance. The headbutt attack of Amargosaurus is 40 in damage, the Rex attack are twice that. 
and the highest damage I've put for our Marcus orders is the Stomp, which does 100. It has longer cooldown and they both have 800 HP. But if they were to go head to head, then I'll just show you. Both the T-Rex and the Amargosaurus are slow-moving creatures and therefore they are better suited for head-to-head -head clash. However, between Amargosaurus and Rexy, Rexy has the advantage due to his higher damage output. You can expect same result against Gigas due to them being only 10 damage less than T-Rex. But of course, according to that logic, that means you should stand a good chance against Spinos, right? Well, about that, let me explain to you area damage. While the stomp ability can reach the main body, it's too low to hit the head of Apexes. That's why I said earlier that you should really try and go for the high ground. That way you can put your enemies below you and therefore give your stomp ability a better chance of hitting the head of your enemy. On flat terrain you have little chances of hitting the head of Apexes. If you aren't able to hit the head of your enemy, you stand little chance especially against Apexes. They literally have to crouch down and give it to you for you to be able to stand a chance. At the very least, I hope you see the damage difference between body shot and headshot. Yes, by no normal attacks may not have the same damage I put as the Rex, but if you can't hit the Rex head, good luck reaching the Spino's head since he's even taller than Rexy. That's why I say, rather than in an open area, you should face Apexes in a dense area. That's the only way I see you standing a chance. You can use the environment into your advantage. Your camera placement are lower than the apexes and therefore you have better viewpoint underneath the trees. If you run deliberately into thick vegetation then the apex may lose his eyes on you. And you can outmaneuver the big fella. His camera are taller and he will most likely be in the trees. It takes very little to stop in a running Apex. I'm sure many of you already have experience just running through the forest and then suddenly had to stop because of a log or rock in the way. While they're busy trying to traverse the forest, you can try and run away or just try and outmaneuver him. If you are going to try and use the terrain against him, then I recommend using the speed subspecies. But alas, even with the conditions in my favor, my lack of experience with the Amarga. Well, let's just say I have yet to kill an Apex on my Amarga. This is just a strategy that I formulated while playing the Amargosaurus and fighting which one that gave me the highest chance against an Apex. But it is yet to kill an Apex, so it's still work in progress, but if any of you can pull it off, then good on you. You stand a much better chance in a 1v1 against pseudo Apexes or mid tiers. Not only because they are not as tall as the big guys and therefore their head are easier to hit, but also because you can utilize your bleeding effect so much more efficient compared to when you're fighting Apexes. The combat style for Apexes is a lot head to head clashing, not too much moving around. That is not a good combination for bleeding, which requires a lot of movement to be able to be utilized at maximum potential. In contrast to that, the fighting style of pseudo Apexes is a lot of running around, hit and run, and slowly chipping away health of the bigger guys. The bleed of Amarga stacks, which means that the more you attack them with your head burn ability, the more bleed time you can stack onto your enemy. Which also means the more they move around without sleeping or laying down, the more health they will lose. Of course, I'm not saying you should rely on your bleed alone. Sure, they may be faster than Apexes and therefore they can dodge your stomp ability. I mean, it's not that conspicuous and it's kinda slower before reacting, so it's not impossible to dodge. Even if you miss, you still have the area of effect, and that can still do damage no matter how small. 
If you are going to fight mainly pseudo wave axes, then I recommend the attack some species. While you aren't the tankiest, you are still quite tanky, at least compared to them. That's why it's okay to invest in damage, at least if you're going to fight them. The smaller the creature, the higher the damage. And let's not forget about the sturdy sense that makes you invulnerable to knockback. This is also why I suggest having that as a quick sense. If you are up against a pack or a 1v1, you can always go to nearest cliff and make it so that your enemy can only attack you from one direction. There is a good combo attack which you can use if you're going to utilize the cliff strategy. After you've done the stomp ability, your other attacks only have one second cooldown, which means after you stomp, you should follow up with either a headbutt or a tail attack, depending on where your enemy are. Remember, stomp and then bleed. Okay, I know that was a lot of information to take in, so I'll try and break this down to an understandable summary. First, I recommend speed subspecies if you're going to fight mainly Apexes, or attack if you mainly go for pseudo Apexes. If you attack by a pack or a pseudo Apexes, then take the high ground, at least a place where they can also take fall damage, and then either bait them into your stomp or let them fall to the death. Don't face Apexes in an open field, if you do, try and run away. If you can, try and face them in a dense area, and then use your superior maneuverability to either have maneuver them and run away, or to, well, try and fight to the last breath. Before I end this, I had to come clean about one thing. I mentioned that I have barely even tried Amargosaurus, and that is because I don't really like Amargosaurus. It's, it is a sauropod, yes, but it's the tiny one, so I'm not too, too fond of it. So to every one of you that requested the Amargosaurus, uh, you guys are all...